Um, all right, well, I'm going to make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I second. Okay, um, any other discussion? Okay, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Okay, so motion passes. Okay, um, Chris, correspondence, yes. are we saving to the end? or do you... oh, We can might as well just go in okay, order. Good. We right. have an invoice we received today from Halloran and Sage. Okay. Invoice 11429531 uh related to a number of enforcement matters and legal matters in court um that amount um totals two thousand three hundred and thirty six dollars okay i'll make a motion to approve the invoice for two thousand three hundred and thirty six dollars may i have a second sure okay michael all in favor Aye. Um, okay. Election representative to IWWC in Lynn Wetlands. Okay, so before was it Mark? Okay. And I believe he wants to. Continue. Oh, he still wants to do that? Okay. Well, I'll nominate. <laughs> He's not here, but I'll nominate Mark to continue as our representative to the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Commission. Second it. Okay, Brenda seconds it. Um, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, public hearings. Dan Wilgens Garden Center. Application for special exception. Use for a garden center development with two seasonal greenhouses, shed slash outdoor display area, and parking on 18,362 square feet property at 1560 Boston Post Road, Map 26, Lot 30, Gateway Business B4 District, Coastal Area Management Zone. Um, continue. Oh, so they're asking us to continue. So the public the, hearing. Um, application is still in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals for Variances. Okay. So the, they've asked that you continue the opening of the public hearing to your February 21st meeting, um, which um, is after the ZBA meeting, and they've also granted us an extension of 29 of their 65 floating days for the public here. I see that. Okay. So, do we have to make a I'll make motion a motion to just to? Okay. Do you want to do that? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to continue on February 21st, 2024, right? Is this 23 or is that from the original? Oh, that is a typo. No, a motion to 24. continue opening of the public hearing till February 21st, 2024. Okay. That's the request. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, under discussion is contractor storage building. Preliminary discussion, 23 Schoolhouse Road, Map 27, Lot 26, Gateway Business District. Owner, 23 Schoolhouse Road, LLC. Agent, Anthony Ruido. I don't. You want me to have a seat up there, at least that way. Yeah. Even if you don't want to stand in some view, that way so they can see you on the camera. So All right. So, uh, Anthony Ruido, owner of uh, 23 Schoolhouse Road. Uh, just trying to come in front of you guys and get a game plan for the uh, site so I don't have to go back and forth with Joe. And so okay. let me give him a little brief. Yeah. So yeah. Anthony yeah. has retained Joe Wren okay. for a special exception permit for a contractor storage and warehouse building um, on a 23 schoolhouse. And uh, there's so issues around the perimeter of the property and Anthony's here to discuss um, possibility of using the request. Um, did you put that in here? So you did receive in your packet uh, uh, yeah, a narrative sure. with a number of photographs. Yeah. Sorry, I was last minute. <laughs> but um, basically what's going on is that one where we're supposed to be doing X amount of arborvitaes 
along the fence line. It's like the lowest lying area. And then the save a tree development. We've been having kind of nothing but issues since I bought the place. So instead of making a big stink about it, we dug out like three feet, put an inch and a quarter stone in there and it really dried it up nice. Um, the problem is with landscaping that area now, um, you know, obviously we need some soil and adding soil to that and all along there would just retain the water and it wouldn't drain good. Um, so I'm asking to, instead of just leave the fence and instead of landscaping on the inside of the fence, like Joe drafted up, just revamp that whole other area between myself and Sally Mitchell and the back side of Save a Tree. Um, so the, the request is section 63 of the regulations. Um, next is section 63.7 screening. Um, it says with the approval of the commission, the um, the applicant could sub substitute an earthen berm wall or fence or location height design and materials instead of the entire buffer. So okay. Anthony's seeking that in the area where he put in all the stone because they're going to have to dig it all out. There's, you said how many feet of stone you put? You put three feet. Wrap it and but the biggest problem is it's always the water. You know what I mean? It comes off Schoolhouse Road. It comes off to Save a Tree Development. And uh, you know I'm, I'm lower than Saigon City as well, so. Um, okay. Is that area A that you? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, area A is between me and the backside of Saigon. That would be landscape. I was also wishing to do you know instead of I know on Joe's draft it was like every four to six feet of arbs, but instead of doing that, doing like a nice mix of shrubs and. Other trees, since it seems like it's a hot item. Um, yeah, <laughs> definitely is. So, you know, instead of doing the usual where everyone just throws in a line of arborvitaes, change it up with some flower, you know, butterfly bushes, some other stuff, and then some low perennials. Um, but no, it's the section B. So, section B would be just the save a tree side, it would be the save a tree side, and they're actually like three feet higher. Yeah, you know. Um, and it always collects there. And they have, so I'm working with them a little bit too. But if we just didn't have to do the plantings there, we could just bring in more stone and it would resolve a lot of issues we've been having, you know, between the, the road runoff, their runoff, and Saigon's. Um, but instead of doing B, I would take that whole other corner, which is a larger area, and it benefits Sally Mitchell and blocks the uh, school line line of sight of the Save Tree building because that thing is just one big square. Um and their trees 40 feet of you know separated they don't really uh do much and we're not gonna see nothing from those for like 50 years anyway so is that area see Sally Mitchell's yeah okay and she has like I think just one of their trees behind her so she really yes. looking for something to kind of help her out. Um so that fence ends like right where the asphalt starts mm -hmm. between B and C. And then that's where we would start all the shrubs and trees and do a good, like a four inch caliper, eight foot, you know, maple couple. Of, that's those ones that are closer to the pavement. Mm -hmm. That was my drawing. They look like almost like flower. Like Then the other one would be the arbs on the backside. And then a fence panel blocking the propane tank. Um, and then basically I'm just going to dress that. I mean, the whole front revamp. And then onto the schoolhouse side with the vinyl fence. Right now, there's a seven foot vinyl fence. We know we, know we got to do the 25 foot buffer, but we're also looking to do 15 feet until the fence and then give me a little bit of green space on my side of the fence since I'm doing everything for everybody else. I mean, I kind of would like to see a little bit of something, you know, instead of all the street side. Um, and then it would be inch and a quarter stone around the whole building. So for drainage wise, it shouldn't be an issue. No, I was no. going to say that could really help take care of the, the drainage. Well, that's what I was thinking. I mean, there's no point to, and it's cheaper than asphalt. Um, Plus, I think it even would look better. Yeah. And the area C would be pretty extensive as far as the landscaping, so it would provide a pretty solid buffer because you put it a little more additional than just mm -hmm. yeah arbor bays and a little. Mix it up with some trees and throw some other things. I mean, I don't care really. I'm just, I, mean, I want it to look nice anyway for the tenants that are in the office building. 
Plus, I know Sally, I've known, known her for years. So I know she's been real. You know, every morning, Save Tree goes out, starts their vehicles and stuff, and half the lights are shining in her bedroom. And for me, I wouldn't want it to disturb her at all. So um, Saigon, we already cleared all his stuff out, took, dumped it all for free just to kind of make him happy. Plus, I didn't want to look at it. I mean, he had car parts buried, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, cleared that all out, added stone in there as well, then took whatever rocks we had along area A, kind of made like a rock retaining wall, and then we're going to do that's where all our plantings will be. Okay. Um, we had a little bit of an easement area because his actual leaching fields that he forgot to tell me about are a little bit on that corner. So we did an easement around it. This A? Um, on the A side, yep. A side going right up towards like schoolhouse. You see how it boxes out? Yes. And there's like a leach, those are his actual, his leaching fields, but it's such a big system that it's like, you know, for a restaurant, that's quiet, you know. Um, so the fence would run 15 feet off the property line, and then I would get um, another 10 or whatever, five on the backside just for green space for myself. Um, and then you do whatever you guys wanted in the front, I guess, just a bunch of decent maples or deciduous trees, you know what I mean? Um, it's all going to be fenced in no matter what, even across the pavement, just because at nighttime we're getting, I don't know, <laughs> random people cut across to go, like, I guess it's shorter, you know, you cut across there, go across Saigon, or uh, save a tree, and the old tequila's parking lot. So I like to kind of just clean it up, have it all fenced. It'll drop down to a probably a four foot or a high foot, a uh, five foot gate across the asphalt. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, besides that, I mean, the, the, the biggest concern is that area B with the drainage issue, because you're physically not going to be able to really get, let alone get anything to survive. It's so wet there, you know. So, but the, but the, uh, the stone has pretty much taken care of it, or? Yeah. Yeah, because now it's like you walk on it. Yeah, there might it might be wet, but it's not all mud or it's it's not absorbing. Because when I, we took the material out of there, it was just years and years of soaking it up. And it was like a sponge. You know what I mean? Okay. Does anybody have any questions, Laura? Um, not that I can think of right now. Okay, Brenda. What's that? Okay. <clears throat> Is this the final? No. Um, oh, okay. I'm going to have to call Joe. was like, hey, let me know anything. Oh, oh, I was okay. like, instead of going back and forth, I just wanted to talk to you guys. Okay. Because the other issue is, if it's inch and a quarter around the whole building, why would, he says we have to put a, a gutter system in to go to dry wells. You're, I mean, so... I mean, we can't, we're not going to get into the drain. Yeah. So this is no. a preliminary discussion yep. for a special exception application. Okay. And the question, Jeff Jacobson will go through and review the drain. Oh, okay. With Joe, when, once he designs it, he gets yeah. to that point. But the main okay. question is, you know, do you think it's reasonable for the property owner to remove the arbor vitae that were behind that? Fence and then have some substantial proposed landscaping in the bare areas that are not filled with trap rock where the where the fence is now you can't um, you you can't see through from you know the rock from the other properties it's hidden it's not visible from the street mm -hmm. so does that seem obviously it would need to be a formalized plan but somewhat of a reasonable request. You know, depending yeah, on what comes in for the preliminary discussion for him to go forward with that with his engineer. You can't approve it tonight. No, no, not no, at all. Right. Are there any concerns or objections or? No, I just want to make sure this one says, so removing existing proposed trees. Those are the arbovides you were talking about? Yeah. Okay. And so we don't know what you're going to replace. He's not that well, there would, so not there. So but. so going back to that section that I read before, it says yep. that you know, with the approval of the of the commission, 
Uh -huh. You know, you, they, you could substitute a berm, wall, or fence. So right uh -huh. now there's a six foot fence. Yep. And I think the proposal is the reason that Anthony's here today is that he wants to take out all that stone. He doesn't want to take out all that stone that he just put into the drainage. And the only way that he could put all the arbor vitis that Joe mm -hmm. Wren put on a fairway plan is to rip out all the stone for the drainage. So under that perimeter screening, substitution for he's proposing to put more landscaping and kind of really heighten up the buffers on the bare areas to hide um, to have a hide from save a tree give sally uh, mitchell next door a little bit more of a buffer so that's he's just looking for just some preliminary feedback yeah okay well i i mean i've heard enough I mean, that looks feasible to me. I mean, there's still a whole lot more, but right now, um, we'll just wait for you to come back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Thanks you guys. Have a good night. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. Okay, next discussion is Gulf Station Sam Store preliminary discussion. 685 Dr. Post Road, Map 36, Lot 102, Shopping Center, B2 District. Syed Kazan. Hello. So, hello. Excuse me. Okay. Hi. Good evening. So I'm just going to give you a quick briefing on this. So at your last meeting, we had a discussion about um, replacing an air pump with a drive through. I'm not drive through. I'm sorry. I just looked at something here in the drive through. Okay. With a air pump and a vacuum that would obstruct a parking space. Yes. That was outside the building. The current air pump is on a sidewalk. The zoning commission said they would like to see this and have a full A2 survey. We don't have in our master file um, any full or recent surveys, only the sketches, which were again included um, in your packet. So that's where we left off. And I'll let the applicant take the okay, yeah. over. Yes. Hello everyone, uh, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Ayyad Kazam and uh, I'm a tenant at 685 Boston Post Road. Um, I'm running that store since uh, 2006. It's been almost 18 years. Uh, so I just want to make it clear like um, I just run the store part. Like, you know, the gas uh, property owner is somebody else owns the property and owns the gas part as well. So basically I am just renting the store part. Uh, but you know the air machine uh, comes under like my responsibility to make sure the air machine is working at the gas station. So um, our air machine has been having a lot of problems like you know it was very old like we always have to call to get it fixed you know. So this time you know I purchased the new machine but we got an option of uh, having a vacuum as well with the air machine. So I thought like, you know, the if we relocate the place of the air machine, that would be like, you know, better for customers. Like, you know, when they come in for, to get air. So it will be like, you know, just uh, the side of the property, which is like not in use a lot like you know not many people park in that corner specific so we could just like if we could put it there you know whenever somebody is uh, getting gas so they will know that you know where we have air and plus you know they will be able to do the vacuum as well you know if it's needed uh, the other thing like you know the where the um the air machine uh is always been uh, that is kind of uh, because we have a building which is like a drive-through kind. So wherever you know people are filling up their air, uh, it's like a drive-through. So sometimes you know the cars are coming from the backside of the building. So it's also it's not uh, 
really much safe, you know, for people like, you know, to put in air in that place. So I think if we are able to uh, relocate, you know, that will be, you know, a benefit for customers. You know, it will be just a separate spot, you know, where they can go and get the air and vacuum. So was you said there was a vacuum in the back of the building? Uh, no, the air vacuum. machine. First, we had only oh, the air. Air, air machine. So the, now they have the machines like, you know, they are combined basically vacuum and air kind of same machine. So now it comes, uh, you can have like with the vacuum as well. So basically like it's the air machine, but it has included uh, vacuum as well. So where we have a uh, air machine right now, uh, I have a picture, you know, which is, uh, you see the one, it says uh, the blue rhino. So you see how it's like in the corner that yes. little machine. So the machine we got, the new one, it's about the same size. So if we have it uh, here, you know, that one, <clears throat> it's like a little bit uh, like safety hazard, you know, like when people are coming from the backside, so they are uh, putting air, you know, so, you know, sometimes it's like not safe. Um, and uh, the, the new place where we think like, you know, it will go and looks better, it will be um, in this corner. Right here. So this corner, you know, have uh, three parking spot, which is like a uh, lot of time people don't park over there. They try to park close to the building. So it's always uh, stays empty, you know, right here. Okay. That's, that's so the space is closest to the road. Yeah, closest to, to the road. road. Right. Yeah. Right. I would think behind the building would be better. So after the last meeting, I think we kind of left the part out was that I brought this up to you during staff report. The commission required an A2 survey because it was obstructing the parking spaces. Yes. But then we, we were discussing this and the issue is that the, the survey is very expensive and they don't own the property. It is very expensive, yes. Yeah, I talked to my landlord and uh, they are not willing to help in that way. They said, you know, because uh, <clears throat> they are not doing anything uh, for their side. So, you know, they said uh, you have to uh, do that on your own. So I checked with uh, some people and everybody, mostly people said, you know, it could take uh, start from 3,000 and it could go up to 5,000. So uh, I think... Uh, uh, going towards that direction, you know, I, I understand, you know, there is a situation of the parking, but, uh, you know, um, the parking, this, especially this corner of the, the property, we have never people parking in that side. Like we have uh, plenty of parking around our building because uh, we have almost 13 parking just around the building. So for making sure like, you know, we have enough parking, I think uh, that will be a little bit, you know, too much for me to spend, you know, as a just owning the store part. Like, uh, you know, we are not making any money from the gas, you know, that's the other company who's uh, making all the money from the gas. So right now the site is pre-existing, non-conforming. It does not meet, you know, perimeter landscaping, front landscaping, you know, right. and the proposal is, we don't know if it's compliant with parking at this point, because we don't have the survey and the proposal is okay. to remove a parking space. Right. And place the vacuums closest to the road. Anybody? Laura? Question? So, so then um, Slayad's next step is to um, get a survey? So, so this was the discussion at the last meeting for the application to the commission said we need a survey to show compliance because of the obstruction of the, the parking space and because of the price of the survey and the uh, lack of cooperation with the property owner to pay for the survey, the request is to waive the survey 
but we're in an awkward situation because we have no way to tell compliance and we're losing a space. Right. We also discussed replacing the air pump where it currently is. I understand it's an issue with going around the building, but it doesn't obstruct or remove any parking yeah. spaces. So I'm, I'm Jerry, and I own um, the heating and cooling company in town. I just did all the HVAC work at this building. So I'm kind of just, just so you guys know who I am, I'm friend with them and just kind of helping them through the process. And I'm going to help them do the process and do the work. So I'm just trying to understand how it all works. So it, it, to me, this is new, right? So, so to fill you in is that gas stations are special exception permits. So when people, just like the gentleman before was talking about his landscaping, he's got a contractor's business, which is going to be a special permit. Okay. And what happens is you have to have a full-blown A2 survey, show compliance with all the parking or these regulations not based on the use. You have to have perimeter landscaping, brothers, street line buffers, and so forth. And the issue that we've encountered is that there's nothing in the file. There is no survey, not even an Ever. old survey. Okay. It's all sketches. So that that's kind of why we're here tonight, because this would, I mean, this proposal requires the special permit. Yes. So we definitely have to have that, or is there a way that we can figure something out for it at all? With all these parking spots, is that so possible? the thing is that, and we went through this. There's parking space requirements, so it's one space for every. 150. Square I wrote it down. 150 feet. square feet of gross floor area within the store, including the storage spaces, and we didn't go through all of those counts because we were pretty confident it's going to be more parking than what is in the parking lot. Right. We understand that you don't use them all every day. However, that's what the regulation says. So the thought was, if he got the survey, he would go through and show the updates and then move the parking, you know, move the vacuum. But if the, if, if the owner of the building's not willing to do that, then how do you get so a So typically, pack? tenants pay for it. So and this, is how, this is why we're here tonight. Because, you know, the thing is, like, you know, my kind of work is, like, for example, like, if we talk about the air machine, Air machine is like, uh, this is a basic need sometime when you don't have uh, enough air in your tire. So we have a lot of people like coming to our store, you know, and uh, you know, they are very much appreciated that we have a machine working and they are able to fix their tire, you know. So it's something that, you know, uh, I know, you know, if you look at the business point, you know, it's uh, probably making like a few cents for us too. But you know, it's also it's a basic need, you know, for especially like who wants to get here, they always look at the gas station. Like they will go to a gas station to get air in their tire. I mean, if it's uh, just think about yourself or myself, if I I need air in my tire, if I go to a gas station just to get gas every day, and if they don't have the air, you know, or if it's always broken. So they will get upset, you know. We've been hearing a lot of complaints that, you know, oh, we come here all the time for the gas, but your air machine is, is it's not uh, working. Right, okay. but your air machine was behind the building. Uh, no, actually, it's front of the building. Oh, it was in the front of the building. It's, 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 okay. it's, on this, on the it's on the corner there on the sidewalk next right. to... But if you the, put okay. in your new machine, is it's wider than this or not? No, actually, it's the exact same size. But you're the people have. I'm just saying have been going and getting air at that spot, right? So uh, if you let me just uh, so if you see right here, so this is kind of drive through uh, right. coming from the back side of the building, right? So if you just imagine like somebody is uh, sitting down putting air and the car comes, you know, it it's not. Uh, I don't feel like it's a safe, you know. I mean, the air machine has always been there, you right, know, right. nothing happened, you know, for God bidden, you know, you never know. So I think, you know, if we, because here when they're putting the air, they're still using one parking spot. So if we move uh, the uh, air machine to this loca new location, so this will be like in front of the gas uh, pumps, like mm -hmm. when people putting gas, they can see right straight ahead, like, you know, they just have to move forward. 
and uh, stand there for like a couple minutes, get air, and they will be leaving. So, right, but your vacuum, which is very close to the road, it's taking up, you say, one parking space. When someone vacuums their car, they open all the doors. I mean, it takes up a very big space. And I don't know if that's... Well, the vacuum won't take up, like... The vacuum itself, no, yeah, well, you bring your car up to it. Well, it's going to be, so it's in the center of the parking spot. So you still have, like, this much right, on each side of it, you know, yeah, yeah. to open your doors. So it is basically, like, right here is the three parkings. So if we put use like middle parking as a, uh, the air and vacuum station, so both sides we have like full parking. So either somebody can uh, park their car on the right side or the left side of the air machine and uh, the door will be open widely because, you know, just uh, think also like when we put in the air machine, is not taking the whole parking. It's like uh, if, when you have one car standing, and you try to open the door is different, but if you have just a machine, it's actually leaving some space uh, from the parking as well because it's going to take only maybe two feet. So two feet is about uh, from the parking. So both parking on the sides, right and left, is going to have more space than like the normal cars are standing and uh, you know doing something. If, if it's like one car is standing and you try to open the door, it's a different. But since it's just the machine and it's going to leave the space for both sides, you know. Guys, don't really. I, I don't. I personally just don't see where that's a good space for it. Does it say vacuum or anything on the vacuum, like signs? It says uh, it air say and vacuum. vacuum station. Well, I'm just asking. Yeah. No, it says uh, on the machine like a sticker, air and vacuum. So people will know that this is like uh, the air. Right? It's a tube thing that comes down. Yeah. yeah. It and, right, yeah. right. It's just like any other uh, place have a vacuum, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like a round shape, you know, and it has a sticker. This is uh, air and vacuum. Mm -hmm. So you, it's your choice, whatever you like to use. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Maui, you know, how they in the back of the car wash. Yeah. They have a bunch of them back there. Well, some of them have signs, that's why. Yeah. They're not going to have a sign on front of them. That's why the Gulf with your logos, how it's yeah. blocked out on the bottom. Yeah, we were waiting for the gas station like, because there's too many signs. Right, yeah. And then, yeah, so that would go right up against the closer to the road. So, what are the next steps, really? Um, so, so I mean, the request here tonight is just to discuss. No, it's it's to, if your last meeting you made a discussion, you made a decision that you wanted a full A2 survey. Okay. The applicant is saying that the survey is expensive and the property owner is not going to help them with it. So they want you to waive the survey, but we have a non-conforming situation where we're eliminating another parking space, which was brought up at the last meeting, which you can't create new non-conformity. Right. So, so it's kind of a sticky situation I mean, I, I get the point about the financial part of it, but from a zoning regulation perspective, your job is compliance. Does anyone yeah. online want to? I don't know. Yeah. Do you, does anyone have any? Brenda? I guess my question is Has he approached the property owner to see if he could negotiate to split the cost of it? It's hard for us to look at this as, with a drawing without the information of an A2 survey to really make an educated decision on this. I think we're limited with the information we have. 
I definitely did that, you know, and even uh, talking about like splitting the cost as well, but uh, they they don't want to be part of it. They're like, you know, we never heard like, you know, the, um, I'm just going to say that whatever they told me. So they told me like, you know, they never had this kind of situation in uh, any of their other gas stations. So they said, you know, since it's, it's you, you doing it, so, you know, it's, they basically said you have to, you know, afford the cost. So they don't want to be part of it because they're not doing uh, any changes uh, for themselves, you know, or anything like that. Is there, have you thought about putting the vacuum and air thing in a different location than that corner that takes up a parking space? Is there an alternative spot? So the, so the right now, just to kind of clarify, the air tank is on a sidewalk. So when you would pull in, you would obstruct the parking space, but it's also near a driveway that sometimes people go around the building because the right. parking in the parking lot, the back parking lot is angled. So when you pull out, you would go around the building yeah. right, to, to, to exit. So that's the existing circumstance, the proposed circumstance to stop the blocking of the parking space and the drive aisle is to put it closest to the street in the perimeter buffer in the parking space and eliminate a parking space over there to have this space. The problem is th there's, there's no survey in the file and you do have a survey requirement and I have no way to um, determine compliance. And that was the reason for the survey. And the applicant is asking not to pay for the survey because it's too much of an expense and he already purchased a stacking. Correct? It cost us about like four to $5,000, you know, uh, once we get up installing everything. So paying another 4,000, you know, doing the A2 survey, it's a uh, $10,000 just for the air machine, you know. So for me, you know, it's a little bit hard because again, you know, I only run the store part. You know, I don't, uh, you know, own the gas. You know, there's another company who owns the gas, the property owner, we just pay the rent for the store. And okay. so we got small business, like, you know, where we making, you know, not that much money that, you know, we can spend, you know, for like this kind of project. You know. Well, you know, it's really a question of compliance and our hands are really tied, right, yeah. I think. There's no other way to do it besides that, like nothing. Well, we can't. So the property is not compliant now. We are yeah. talking about this and then, so once the survey is done, then you have to show it, there's going to have to be some upgrades for compliance to show that you can make up for the extra parking spaces and so forth. So but you know, if you believe me or not, like uh, these, uh, the area where we're putting the air machine and vacuum, this uh, was not uh, like, you know, the part of uh, parking. Since we, I thought like uh, there is a space, like, you know, when we were doing lining back in a few years ago. So I did some linings here too. So we have uh, people know that they can actually park here as well, you know. So this corner is was never been in use of as like, you know, uh, really the parking, you know, again, you know, like you explained to me that they, you know, since you guys don't have the surveys, we don't know if it used to be parking and they finished it. So, but since I am running the store, I know it's been 18 years, that space, you know, we utilize as ourselves, you know, uh, that, you know, there's a corner of the, property that you know people don't know they can park over there so we made uh, like you know a few lines that uh, people can park like three cars so but still you know that is a little bit far from the store so nobody really wants to walk that far to park and come to the store when we have like uh, uh, so many parking around the building so basically we have like a uh, backside the full backside uh, it's a big building so backside is we have like four or five parking and then we have other side we have four parking. So they never park in 
that corner that you know they have to walk all the way to store you know but even on like a safety thing wouldn't we rather get it away from the building to a safer spot right well well part of it is going through the whole a2 survey so so the parking lot and the special exception would be designed there's a whole section okay. on parking lots that has the dimensions of the parking spaces, interior landscaping islands, perimeter islands, drive aisle widths, and all of that. And because nothing's really happened and there is no survey, you're kind of opening up a little bit of a can of worms here because now you're we don't know. To, well, you might, yeah, it might cause problems. And, and that was the reason the commission was saying they wanted to see it as the special exception and to get um, that survey. Okay, so uh, is there a reason you can't put it in the back on the sidewalk behind the building? Well, the there, that's a handicap. The handicap is so that would be a bad, a bad spot for it. We were actually gonna put like uh, the remember the ice box, mm -hmm. so we didn't do it because we want to make sure like the handicap people can use okay. the both doors, the front and the back, because we do have like a slope uh, one side of the walkway. Which like the handicapped people can, you know, use that and come through the back door uh, as well as the front door. So if we park like too much uh, the walkways, that will be not good for like handicapped people. Is there any spot that seems like it would be good? At all? You know, it, it is just tight here, right? No matter what safety wise, people coming in and out and coming around. And people come in here all the time. Just part of the, see, part of the, the whole special exception process right. is to improve all those things, right. you know, and to make them more accessible and have wider safer, so. and safer. So, so that's if I own the building someday, like I own the property, you know, I, I would actually no worries. I spend that kind of money. But I don't know, like, you know, sometimes, you know, we could have uh, issues with the landlord or our lease is over. So we don't know if we're going to stay there for that long, you know, we do this kind of stuff, you know. Well, that's without that A2 survey, you know, but then it would open up a can of worms for you. Um, I don't see any way out of this myself. I don't know what everybody else thinks. I agree. Anyone else? Anybody? Yeah, I know at one of my first commission meetings, must have been December 4th, we talked about um, gas stations and we brought a lot of them that were not conforming into conformity um, because we allowed, yeah, what was it? Uh, we, didn't, we didn't bring them into conformity. We did a regulation change okay. that would potentially make them more conforming for existing Okay. okay. Well, so, we, I guess we may have made them more conforming without, without, what happened. without yeah, doing yeah, anything. Yeah. But that regulation still doesn't work for this property. No. Okay. Um, this is just a broad question about all the parking we have in Old Saybrook. Um, and all our rules about how many spaces per 150 square feet. Um, as a result, we have massive parking lots that are underused. And we just had this uh, tree save our shade presentation. Are we going to do anything to change the regulations for parking spaces? It, to so, me, it just seems like it's um, too... Um, we're requiring too many spaces. So in this circumstance, if this property was to come in, into compliance, they would have to put in all the landscaping. So they don't meet the street line landscaping buffer on two sides. They don't have street trees. They don't have the perimeter buffer. They don't have the rear buffer. That would all be there in this circumstance. So, so it's kind of a balance that way. So and there are other options too to have pervious parking and alternative types of parking. 
but this lot doesn't, it, it's so non-conforming. We don't, I mean, I don't even have a survey in the file from the 70s. That's how non-conforming it is. Yes. Because they've done some surveys, but they only did done it like whatever they were required. Like we, we changed the, they changed the tanks uh, back in like 2015, I believe, or 16. So that time, whatever the survey they needed, because even I approached to that person who did the survey for them for uh, doing the tank part. I said, you know, maybe you have an A2 survey, I can pay you some amount and get from you, or you can do some work, you know, at, uh, you know, a little bit less amount, you know, since you already done it. So answer his answer was like, we used the previous uh, survey from the previous uh, property owner. So we just uh, did whatever like we were supposed to do and uh, we didn't take any like A2 survey or you know, those kind of stuff. So, so but, yeah. but that was really a different type. So that survey was for underground tanks. It wasn't yeah. really for yeah. zone purposes. Yeah, so they basically used uh, also previous information and just came out with whatever they had to change. So, but they they said, you know, we, we, we're not able to help you. Because I thought like maybe it would be cheaper to go through with them, you know, since they have the uh, most of the information. So, but they said, you know, we don't do the A2 survey and we just done it, whatever we were required, you know, to mm -hmm. do it. But we don't even have anything in the file. She went back to the 70s, right? Well, no, the whole file. I'm saying we don't, so, I mean, even in our non conforming gas stations, like right. I pull something out from, you know, 40, 50 years ago, I, I don't, everything in there yeah. it is a sketch, unfortunate. Yeah. And this is kind of what happens where these special exceptions trip is that we go through something's proposed to be changed. And anyway, and now we don't have any survey for zoning purposes. No. And there's no other place that you could pick this? Uh, besides just the same place that we have the air machine, so this is our best bet, you know, to go, I mean, put it there and uh, because we need the air machine, you know, like everybody know that, you know, they're coming to the gas station and we have the air machine. You probably have more people using the air machine than you would right. the bathroom. Right. The vacuum is like also, it's a, some people like, you know, they want to keep their car clean and when they are putting the gas, you know, they think like same time, they can they get a chance to take care of their car so i mean not all the time people are going to be doing the vacuum but you know we have a machine which is like uh you know supplying both uh, things you know so we just have um, air and vacuum together mm -hmm. well are we making a decision this evening well, the, the decision was made at the last meeting for a survey. For, we needed this survey, is the request right. to reconsider the requirement of the survey, which is the zoning rank. So, I mean, I don't know why you would postpone it again. Yeah, unless there's some other information you need, but I that, that would be the survey. Yeah. So really, unless you could come up with the survey, there's nothing more that we can Really, I mean, no matter what, we can still put it somewhere close to the building, right? You probably think the most is just to replace it where it is. Where it is, yeah. Okay. Should we move it over? I mean, should we do something a little different to make it like safer? Or we are concerned is we, we got safe the driver's yes, side. Yeah, yeah, safety right there on that corner, right? I'm just so. scared, you know, when somebody is like not paying attention, just putting ear sitting down. And the other people are driving by, you know, and they don't uh, keep it far, you know, from them. It's going to be the, an issue. Shift the propane tanks closer to the end of the building. But then it's going to bring it closer to the uh, way people coming out after putting the gas, you know, because that's also the thing. Like, we, you know how we have pump number one and two. So when people are putting gas and, you know, finishing it up, they have to come out, you know. So that will bring closer towards that, you know. It's a tougher right there, safety yeah. was. Like, for example, well, I, I guess where, what I'm going with is that if you push it further over, you have mafia blocks in the parking spaces, right. the other spaces. Right. Um, 
So, you know, that's and you're worried about people opening the doors. I mean, those blocks are technically a zoning violation, but I understand why it's there for the propane tank. Yeah. So it's, you know, how do you jockey it around for an existing? Right. This is why we keep getting to this uh, right. the survey point, and that's why the commission requires this. No, I know. I, I totally respect, you know, for the laws that you guys have, you know, but my thing is only that, you know, it's a... Uh, this this is just like a better spot, you know, for something that we are trying to do. Like, you know, we, but again, you know, it's totally up to you guys because, you know, the rules are rules. Um, but this uh, place, you know, would be best for something like this, you know. Because it's going to be a lot less work for me to just to replace uh, the old machine where that is put it right there, it will cost me less money actually. But uh, again, you know, bringing towards the new place is just gonna give a better look to the property that, you know, we are, we have a station where, you know, you can actually, you know, go there and do your thing and you're not gonna be in the way, you know, it's just gonna be on the corner of the property. So, I think what it's come down to is if you can't provide an AQ survey that we can't approve, right? I mean, I can't think of, unless you can think of something else, I can't think of another thing. I mean, moving, we discussed kind of some options. You can't do it. And what if we try to bring like uh, towards uh, the Elm Street? Because this is kind of also like uh, on the other side, you mean? Yeah, like where the right Elm up street against is. the street where the phone booth is. Because the phone booth is not in use anymore, like uh, it's still there, but you know, so that space maybe can maybe utilize for something like this, or bring it over more, you know, towards, towards the side. Yeah, towards the side, you know, so it's more uh, of Oh, you know. But you still don't have a survey. It's kind of like I know you don't have a survey. Yeah. Wouldn't it be just I? Wouldn't it be easier just to spend the money and get the A two survey? My thing is this, you know. I'm gonna be honest to you. Like, uh, if I spend money, you know, on A two survey for some reason, you know, we still couldn't do it. You know, I'm not the landlord that I can use this survey for something else in the future. Like I spent the money, okay, it, it didn't work this time, you know, for something like this, but I will be able to use in the next project or something. If it's a landlord, it's a different because you're doing initial investment. Right. Like, you know, in the future, some upcoming projects, you can use the same A2 survey, like you will have it in your records. Um, but someday you never know, maybe I buy the property and, uh, you know, I will try to do compliance completely. Because uh, as uh, uh, Christina knows, like, you know, we I'm in this town, you know, we try to be very helpful, you know, with the police, you know, the just like a couple of weeks ago, they had an incident at my gas station. Somebody was trying to run over the top, you know. So the police chief came at 12 o'clock in the store and uh, made my guy to wake me up and told me like I have to come to the gas station and give us the footage because they had to they had a very short uh, time of the uh, filing everything to the court so we had provided them you know the footage of the uh, place you know so it was very useful for them so we we know that you know we want to compliance with the everything but in this situation my hands are like you know it's, it's a lot of money for me you know yeah. Especially like in this kind of weather, we are just uh, we understand, but we also have our rules. And and just so you know, I mean, you can look up all of the zoning rules and regulations on um, yeah. yeah on the okay. website. On so website. like say. Say we kept it where it is, right? Could we put a mafia block in that spot and put it on that? 
on the very end. So, so the parking spaces are supposed to be unobstructed. Unobstructed. The parking space with any kind of a block in it that's a zoning violation. And what if we put like the block up on the on the walkway? We put it up on the walkway. Just because the vacuum's got to be up no matter what, right? So. Well, I, I mean, it's really up for you guys to come up with like you know, the, the design. You know, as to what you're doing, the problem is without you know the survey moving it all over the place is going to be. Well, we can, because we can't. So part of one of the there's a whole section in the regulations on what's required with the survey in order to do this. Okay. And in this circumstance, there's just nothing no, there where I can even try to use an old survey. So I, I'm not really sure how to guide you. That's why you're in front of the commission because yeah. But if we don't uh, put like you know the mafia block in the parking space, but we we would uh, need to use like on the the same space where we have the air machine right now, just to give a little bit raise you know from the from the floor you know, so we would uh, you know use where the air machine is right now. We will just use the same space, like not moving anywhere else. But we will just. Uh, but it's not as long as you don't obstruct the parking. That's no, like, yeah, no, no, it'll, it'll, it'll fit onto the sidewalk. And so, sidewalk, right. yeah. Yeah, because yeah. it's not, you know, it's like the size of this thing, pretty right. much a little shorter. But if we put it there in place, get that air machine out of there that's there now, put the block on that walkway. Maybe that, there's a way to just better reconfigure it. That's what I was kind of yeah, getting at right. before. And it won't mess up the park. But even you know? with the propane, try to reconfigure it. I mean, you've got. I don't think we have to. I think there's enough space to the left of the propane. Yeah, it's like it uh, on way onto the. Between, because we're going to move that. Uh, the other one because they, that's not working so we don't want to have like uh, two way machines you know so we will remove this moving yeah because yeah. yeah. we already have the block and we have the right. vacuum machine so yeah because we have the block and we have the vacuum machine so if the parking is going to be the biggest issue obviously without the without the survey if we can put the block right on the sidewalk and put the machine there in place of the air machine it's still going to be in the same spot right and it's just going to be higher and it won't mess up the parking spot. So people park there all the time to get air. So it's always being obstructed all the time, you know, that parking spot is, right? So people are always- But getting the air and getting your car vacuumed are two different things. I mean, the vacuum is gonna take- well, It's mostly for the for the air thing more than anything. Yeah. Right? You know, the vacuum is not gonna be used as much as like going to a car wash, right? So it's just gonna be up close to the building as part of it. So I'm glad think... you <laughs> I, I don't I I can't I just can't wrap my head around it. I don't I can't tell can you return the vacuum and just replace the that air? air machine? No. Because this uh, I think the unit came from like um, from Ohio or somewhere, you know, with the special the delivery box, you know, was shipped by the third party. So just kind of throwing out ideas because I'm right. exhausting all the ideas, unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, if we're not messing up the parking spot, I mean, why can't we put the mafia block there with the machine there? Because it's still going to be doing the same thing that it always does. Not changing anything except lifting up a little bit higher and making it more a better of an air machine because people go there all the time, especially now that it's being updated. And the right thing, I think we had it like before too, but uh, we that machine was not uh, working, you know, so we got rid of it. But uh, if it's it was right there, but the yeah, with the with the air thing, you know. How long ago was that? That's uh some time ago, you know. <laughs> like how long ago? I would say maybe like eight years ago. At least. And you were there when it was. Yeah, I, I've been there yeah. since 2006. Okay. I don't know. Just... I, I, this is this is this is a request to reconsider your requirement for a survey. So you need to make some kind of. Decision. Well, if we do, if we, we reconsider, what are we looking for then? That, that's what this. Well, that's the thing. 
Because we still have other well, we want your blessing, yeah. you know, like if we could do it without the right way. to survey and we could do it the right way, you know, where you know it will not mess up, uh, it will be more safe, you know, it will look good. But we need uh, your blessing, you know, without uh, aid to survey, you know. And you said it too, it could open up. But if you require uh, aid to survey, then we're going to have to use the same spot, you know. Okay, what does uh, what does we all think? What do you think? I what think do you we need to survey if they're going to move? If that's you want to move, yeah. I don't see any way around that. Well, if you if we get a survey and it said you got to do all this stuff, right? So you open up a can of worms, what you said before, right? Could create more problems. So and it's costly to get that survey as a small business. So if we don't do the survey. Is that the best place then, if we just put it in that same spot on a mafia block on the sidewalk? Well, if we're requiring the survey and you can't produce it, we then don't. we have to make a decision. So what's, Laura, last comments. Okay. <clears throat> um, I, I hear what they're saying. Uh, I'm always searching for air and vacuums and I know where they are in old Saybrook and it would be nice to have one there. Um, and I feel for you with the cost of the survey, I'm wondering maybe if you can negotiate with the um, surveyor um, to get a better, a better rate so that we can move forward. I can look into that too. And that's probably your best bet. Mm -hmm. I think it, I think you should do that because mm -hmm. I'm inclined to say without the survey. But let's say, you know, because I I know your time is very important. So yeah. if we cannot, if I'm not able to negotiate or get it at uh, the rate I can afford, uh, then, you know, we we can put it, uh, we can just replace the old machine or old wherever the... Well, you have to then talk to Chris. Do you want to... That's how we ended up here. <laughs> it's what I'm saying. Oh, so it's okay, the discussion but... of replacing it, relocating it, and then there was no survey. And, and we... there's a number of non conforming So at your last meeting, you decided you wanted a survey. Right. Yes. The survey was expensive. That's so we're here. Do you want to leave it where you try to negotiate a survey or no? I, I can try it, you know, like. Uh, Why don't we leave it yeah. that way then? You could try to negotiate a survey because otherwise. No, um, like my question is like, do I have to come back again, like uh, just the replacing? Well, if you get the survey, that's what I was saying. Should he see you, or does he have to come back to a meeting? Well, the survey would be the request for the survey was to obstruct the parking space and put right the closest to the road. That was the initial discussion. So now the question that he's asking is, can he just replace the air machine with a vacuum and air machine without? No, he was going to try to negotiate the survey. Oh, right, but it, I, I unfortunately I don't think there's going to be much negotiation okay. because okay. most surveyors are several months out. So I right. think it's okay. kind of an unrealistic yes. expectation. Right. Um, okay. You know, I mean, it may be in a few hundred dollars. It's not going to be a fifty well, percent yes, difference yes. or anything yeah. to that um, nature. So we really haven't come to an amicable decision or agreement of what you can do, as far as I can see. Well, you pulled all the members. I did. And everyone wants the A2 survey. So that's your answer. Um, and the answer is. But if he was going to leave it there. That's the need, question for still, you. We still would need the survey. Right. That's I the question the for you. Okay. I thought the okay. survey was up. Well, so if the air machine broke and he replaced the air machine without coming to you, could he have done that? I I don't think I'd be running out there with a zoning violation to replace an air machine. If he replaced like with like, if he replaced an air machine with an air machine, but this becomes a different issue because it's with a vacuuming component, which brings in safety and brings in other issues. 
Right. I mean, well, you know, this is why I'm here. I, this no is, is your special. Is these, like so, gas permit. stations are special permit. Mm -hmm. Right. I went through the requirements. It's not working. So right. This is me bringing this to you for guidance. Okay. The property or the store owner is looking for guidance from you. So, basically, like we can just put machine there, but we can just say, like, it's no vacuum, just the air machine. Well, the air machine is already there, right? But it's not working. Well, it's already count. there, so fix it. No, we can't fix that's why we bought a new one. The the machine that was... but you but what you bought was not a replacement. You bought a replacement that has something else added to it, right? The vacuum. Is that right? Am I not no, trying to understand? Yeah, no, that's that's true. Like, you know, we bought a machine which has air and vacuum, right? So, but, you know, if we have uh, somebody is getting, uh, like, I understand. air there, you know, they can do the vacuum. I don't get it, like, you know, why we can have, like, the different machine which is doing the air and vacuum. Well, I think we all agree that our last meeting that we all wanted the A2 survey and you don't have that. So um, Michael still wants to have an A2 survey. I still uh, want I, the A2 survey. Yeah. Yes, the answer is yours. Um, so I think you established everybody wants a survey several times. And yeah. My question okay. is, what, what, can they replace the air machine with an air and vacuum machine in its existing location? That's, I think, the question. That wasn't the question. The question was, do we still want the A2 survey? Right, but then their most recent question, so I think you've established you want an A2 survey, but okay. the most recent question is, move. is the, obviously it's not working to move it because we've just talked about 10 different locations to move it. Right. Yeah. So now they're asking, can they replace the air machine with an air and vacuum it's machine in the same spot. spot? In the same spot without coming back to you. Okay, well... I would be if it's in the same spot. I think I would say all right. I know what okay, well, what do you ladies think? I if agree. It's in the same spot. Yeah, if it's in the you same agree. spot, put in the uh, two for one. Okay. But his Better? concern was about safety, and I think it was a valid concern that to put it there. The reason he was asking to move it was from a safety perspective. And can we honestly endorse something that may create a difficult situation, a more dangerous situation? So your answer is no. Right. And my answer is no. But that's two, two yeses and two no's. Um, so so I'm, can I'm we concerned can about safety as have, well? Pardon me? Is it possible for him to come back one more time? We have five people and we can. Well, I guess we'll. Uh, I want to move on. So, well, I mean, we had what in our last meeting. Where's the minutes? But, Laura, you were concerned about safety as well. Right. <clears throat> Especially when I look at this map and mm -hmm. I do see that there's not a lot of space. Right. But it has worked well for the air machine, but I also understand that when you get your car vacuumed, you open mm -hmm. up all your doors. So it seems like I, I, there'd have to be some sort of barrier to keep people from cutting that corner. And so I don't know I, if there's room for that. But if we put like a barrier, then it's going to be again coming in the parking lot. So well, I guess where I'm going to, I'm just looking at the minutes from your last meeting. Uh -huh. And all the regular members were here, and the vote or the the discussion was a survey. So I don't really see um, right now. We've got two aldermen seated. I don't see what we're going to get for a different answer if we go back to the same. Yeah, no, five members either. from the last meeting. So, so is it a is it a motion to deny then? It's guidance. So what so, I think you're seeing for guidance is that you want the A two survey. Sure. If right. it's going to move anywhere other than the location, and their question is, can they add yeah. the vacuum with the air in the same location in your split? Right. 
But you know, the air machine is always uh, uh, stayed at the same place before. So I mean, you know, if we 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 gonna have an air machine. I mean, we can have a gas station without uh, air machine. So we need to uh, put it somewhere. Well, your air machine was already there, but you, mm -hmm. when it broke, you purchased something without asking if you could do that, without coming to. No, mostly gas stations, like, you know, they do have vacuum and. Uh... Our, like she said, our last minutes talked about the A2 survey. I, I know that you, it broke, but I mean, I don't see anything other than what we discussed at our last meeting. We wanted an A2 survey. Um, if you fix the air machine, fine, because it was already there. But I don't agree with the, um, the vacuum because I, I've seen cars at vacuum places and the, all the doors are open. It's not like going to put air in your tires. It's definitely different than that. So are you saying the addition of a vacuum to replace the air machine in the location that it's in now is another use and it's expanding the special permit? That's why you want the survey. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's where you're yeah, going back. Yes. yes. And you can't yes, return Brenda, the can't yes. go back yes. to them and, and exchange it just for an air machine? No. Can you shut off the vacuum component? I mean, we can. Like, you know, just remove the hose. You know, like people think like this is just the air machine. Well, you're going to have to do what you have to do because it's getting late and I want to move <laughs> on with the agenda. I mean, we've gone round and round with this. Is it possible so for you to sell this and to replace it with just an air machine? No, it's some, this is not the item that, you know, a lot of people are going to be looking to buy. The answer is no. So, I mean, I can look into the A2 survey. I should not promise, you know, um, we will try our best, you know, to see if we can find somebody who wants to do it at the price that I can afford, uh, you know. Okay. So the conclusion, the conclusion is if we don't have an A2 survey that we can't go further with this. That's all I can say. If you can come back with an A2 survey or. Or just replace it as an air machine. Or yeah. an A air machine. The air machine, I, I mean, that's already there. Yes, if you can, like Chris said, or somebody said, turn off the vacuum part of it. But it's we're not approving that. Okay. Okay, sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Good night. Sorry. Good night. Sorry. Okay, are we doing the workshop? Yes. Okay. Discuss problematic regulations for possible tax amendments. You sent that to us, but I don't have a copy of that. I'm going to make you copies. I'll be right back. Do you have copies at home? I'm I printed mine. Okay. Do you, Laura? You're muted, Laura. Uh, yes, I'll get it. Uh, I, you know, really, we went around and around, and I can't do it anymore. I mean, no, no, I, I understand. You, 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 we, you we have, have to try and help some. We did try to help them, but every time we had a suggestion, he said no because. Yeah. Well, I mean, really. I just don't know why he cannot return that item. I, I, well, he went and bought it without or finding or, out if he could. I mean, that's just not right. He did a really good job in terms of um, making the argument on his behalf. You know, he was very articulate oh, yeah. and he did a yeah, great job with that. that. And it was very compelling, but it comes down to regulations well, and it comes down to that. safety. Right. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. <clears throat> you were and right. He was, awesome. he was concerned about the safety. 
he was concerned about the safety. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm sorry that that happened, but. Yes, because you try to help somebody out and somebody has a small business and. I know that he's been here for a long time. And... Yeah, but why is he responsible for the right. vacuum in the other? When the gas station person usually is the one who owns the pumps and that type of thing goes with it usually. Yes. So I don't understand why. Right. But you wouldn't make the unless sale unless he agreed if you didn't have that. Right. Pump. Right, yeah. you'll go to another facility. Yeah, so I'm just wondering if he had agreed in the beginning when he maybe leased the store part. Yes, that know. used to be, but it was mobile, right? It was mobile before they just changed over to... Uh, I think it was always golf, wasn't it? No, I think it was... No, it was it Chucky's or... It mobile? was called Chucky's, yeah, or something. Yeah, but the gasoline I thought was a mobile. Yeah, it was mobile. You switched to golf. They just did a rebrand. Yeah, the more I think about it, the more there was something wrong with what he was saying that that pump that he could not sell it back or just. Yeah, I, and I, I'm sorry about. It. But anyhow, me. All right, so sorry for getting this to you a little bit delayed for the workshop. While we've been talking about this, I guess we've been delayed because we've had so many other petitions to amend the regulations. Mm -hmm. So just for our new members, um, what we do periodically as as we're reviewing applications, we find regulations that conflict or potentially there's issues with or they don't make sense or we think they need to be clarified or the laws change and they become illegal. So pretty much almost once a year we have what we call a housekeeping session and what I do is I keep track of all your comments for the most part through a year and then we get a bunch together then we go through and we fix the problematic regulations that were discussed. So um, we can just start with page one and I can run through them. And then if you've had a chance to review them, you can provide comments if that works. Yes, go ahead. Sure. Okay, so um, the first proposal, section nine definitions. Um, we have a definition for billboard. And at one of the meetings, um, it was suggested a billboard sign will not include any sign approved as a special exception use just to remove that from the definition because it really has no bearing on on the definition why are we talking about whether it's a special exception use under the definition so the thought was just to clean that up and remove that text any comments no um, when we were talking about gas stations, we had a gas station petition, or we've had several. There was a discussion about what is a shopping center. Um, and it was kind of interesting as we tangled, untangled the regulations. We ended up in the parking section of the regulations where it talked about no less than four businesses um, would be in a shopping center. And that's how the shopping center parking regulation was determined. So the thought was it would make sense just to define shopping center rather than have it buried within a parking regulation. So um, this somewhat mirrors what is in the parking regulation. You just had to tweak it a little bit. So a shopping center would be a group of no less than four business establishments that may include retail, personal service theaters, restaurants with a public vehicle, parking area shared in common. Theaters is, that's a huge building, theaters. But we did have several theaters back in the day. Yeah, we did. Uh, so it just, you never know. Yeah, you don't, but I don't picture theaters coming to town. Any comments? 
Okay, at some point, um, I think this was over a zoning matter, a zoning enforcement matter. I know it was a zoning matter. Um, section 10.6.4 of the regulations came up. And as I was discussing with our attorney, he determined it was inconsistent with a change in the statute and illegal. So um, the letter, the writing in the, um, just kind of that small aerial font is from the Connecticut General Statutes and the proposed, oops, what happened? Did I lose the text here? What? Oh, that's text to clarify. No. I might have printed the wrong version for you. So when, after the IT issues with our first, um, after we got the Save Our Shade set up, um, it ended up that I went upstairs and then my computer completely logged up. So I think I printed the wrong one for you. Well, on the next page, so, the proposed text amendment to correct the inconsistency between the state statute and the current zoning regulation. Is that the one that should have gone on the first page? Maybe it was printed wrong? Was that section 10? Yeah. yeah, so that should actually get so, moved. So that's yeah. what page should. So that's correct. That needs to get moved up. Yeah. Um, but the text with the next the new section 10.6.4. This is regarding the discontinuance of a non-conforming use. Mm -hmm. This was drafted by our attorney. Um, so I think it's something we need. Yeah. Yeah, I just see I'll change that. That's yeah, idea. I saw that today because I printed these out at work and then I didn't take them home, but I was reading them. And then I saw this and I said, oh, I think that belongs there. So um, the next one is a proposed text to clarify rooftop deck language. Um, I'm not sure if our newer members are aware of the rooftop deck situation, um, but what's happened is that the Zoning Commission historically has not um, allowed rooftop decks off of half stories, um, and there's been several um, Rooftop decks that have gone to the Zoning Board of Appeals. The Zoning Board of Appeals has granted variances, and in one case, um, they decided that they had some disagreement with the regulation, and there was some back and forth. And the Zoning Commission, the Zoning Board of Appeals, wrote to the Zoning Commission um, for clarification and actually suggesting amending the regulations for rooftop decks. And the Zoning Commission responded to the Zoning Board of Appeals that they did not want to do that. They didn't think it would be a good idea to have people, you know, particularly on non-conforming residential lots that don't meet, the houses don't meet setbacks, to have people on the second story or third story of a house having a rooftop um, gathering or party, and it, and also from the aesthetics of it, it um, you know it encourages flat roofs, which really don't have as appealing of architecture in certain cases. There was a number of things that were discussed. So um, after that conversation, the zoning commission asked um, that um, we we fixed this, there were some suggestions, and um, this is what we came up with. And, or there was some comments from different members, I should say. And then my thought was also maybe just to define a rooftop deck, because there were some discussion <clears throat> back and forth saying that a deck wasn't a use, it was an architectural feature, and the zoning commission said, Well, it really is a use, it's not, you know, it's not like siding, it's not there. I mean, it, it does have a function. So, this is the proposal, um, with some comments from some time ago from members, and then I put together this rooftop deck. So, I don't know if you have any initial comments. I'm good. I am too. 
Right. So the next regulation, if we're ready to move along, is that um, in section three, there's a little section in the, like a bullet point on the side. And um, it talks about the commission may require bond. So somehow, I don't know, we missed this one, but um, the commission's authority to require bonds was eliminated by changes in the law. So this one is also just kind of a housekeeping to make it make the law. Good. Okay. Um, section nine definitions defines a walkway. And in section 62, parking access and circulation, 62.2. 3B identifies walkways as being concrete only, which conflicts with the definition of walkway. As we know, people could have walkways made of different materials, not just concrete. It could be pavers, pervious pavers. So um, the suggestion was to, under 62.3B walkways, to expand it to allow our other ADA compliant material with a minimum width of five feet for pedestrian circulation. Does that make sense? Okay. okay, so accessory apartment definite, um, accessory apartments as um, we've always had accessory apartments about a year or two ago, there were some changes up in Hartford and the laws changed and the zoning commission decided to have include in their regulations, which they didn't before to allow for detached accessory apartments just to promote alternatives um, to the single family house or alternative or, or apartments, um, just hope with the hope of maybe having some additional living space. So just a few things I think that came up, and this is I think the second time we've tweaked it. Um, we knew it wouldn't be perfect to begin with and as applications come in, um, I'm identifying certain things, which some of them I brought to the commission. So um, the proposal, the first proposal is amend accessory department to remove text requiring any finished areas in the decatched garage to count towards the area of the accessory apartment. For example, a garage may be used by the primary, so the primary occupant of a dwelling. So you have a, a single family house and then you have a garage with an apartment over it. If the person who has the primary dwelling wants to make an area that's finished in there, maybe it's an exercise room or something like that, we originally could go on through that would not be allowed. So when we created the regulation, the purpose of not allowing any finished area in the garage to count towards the accessory apartment was that it would go through and just kind of it would just be a hallway or something like that that you would go up to the apartment or there was a proposal someone wanted to kind of put a room on the first floor. But the more I review these and the more we have coming through with all the other requirements, it has caused situations where, especially if you're fitting out an existing garage um, with the square footage requirements for the accessory apartment, um, sometimes it just makes it so that people can't really design it. And, and the thought would be is to let the property owner, you know, I mean, if the property owner has some area that they want to designate for their own use, because you could have the first floor of a garage with a finished area that the apartment dweller has no access to. If the primary owner wants to put something in there, like a little exercise room, the answer would be no, according to this, because it would be contributed to the accessory apartment. And if that accessory apartment, which most of them are maxed out when they're constructed, um, it doesn't work. So this would just give that flexibility to the architect or the designer and the homeowner. Mm -hmm. Any comments? So 
the one thing this one, uh, the next one is that we put in a requirement that the accessory apartment had to be located no closer to the street than the primary dwelling. And what I'm finding is this is a little bit of a problem. And I think this was geared more towards smaller lots. And what's happened is you have a lot. So say you have a house on a big lot on Bocum Road or Schoolhouse Road, and there's an existing house that's closer to the street and it's small, and they can put a house in the back. I mean, most people don't want to build something that looks awkward. Yeah. So someone came in and it was on Boca Road and where they were proposing the primary house, you wouldn't even see the primary house, but because the existing primary house was in the front, they were told no and they needed a variance, which they never sought the variance. So the thought was maybe to eliminate that to allow for some yeah. flexibility. Didn't we talk about that? That's we did there. talk about it. Remember, we had a variant. Someone came through initially. Yeah. What had happened was there was an existing house, and they yeah. went for a variance because of the shape. The lot was long. Uh -huh. They put the two houses next to each other. So because they couldn't put one behind the yeah. other, and it ended up that the appearance of it, it kind of, it almost kind of looked like two houses. It didn't look that awkward. Yeah, they the were so little consistent, yeah. right? Yeah. So that was, I put that in there. That was in my notes, if you would like to keep that. Any thoughts? I like this. That's a tricky one because um, lots are so varied. And it is, and I mean, that's the whole thing. So you could have a house on a lot that's a perfectly good bungalow, and then they want to build the main house, and what it would do is force the property owner to tear down the little house to put the big house in the front and the little house behind it and the reality of it is if you're going to keep the little house you know the smaller one and and i don't know it is kind of tricky yeah so i guess it <clears throat> depends on the street view well i think for the most part most property owners and in these accessory apartments the property has to be owner occupied for the most part. I mean, people don't really want to put something ugly or awkward on their property. I mean, that's just right. my, no, I mean, someone's putting point. in with the cost of building, I mean, that's which is funny. through the roof yeah. and the amount of money that they're putting in, people typically strive to build something. You know, it's not as though these apartments or these dwellings, you know, are, can be both rented. So someone, the owner has to live somewhere on the property. Okay. But that's all right. Should I move along? Yeah, I think so. All right. So Bob brought this up a while ago. Um, bed and breakfast transient lodging um, is allowed in residential and business districts, but in the B4 zone and potentially others, we prohibit dwelling units. So it's a little bit of a conflict. So what I did, and I just see that I missed one, um, was I went through and tried to remove dwelling. Okay. So in the first, under A, there should be, there's one more dwelling that should be removed. Okay. Oh, yeah. So what I did is as I went through, I just tried, I went everywhere it said dwelling and tried to reword it to remove the conflict in the zones that dwellings are prohibited. <laughs> and 
and I didn't get into the content of rewriting. This is just, we'll fix it so it makes sense. And so C, the dwelling should be, yep. Well, I put the dwelling orb that or that would affect us. So that would address the business zone. Well, in D, so I'm a little confused. We'll preserve the architectural style and integrity of the building as a dwelling. In a residence district. Okay. And floors above ground level will be located inside the dwelling. In the event that the dwelling is in historic structure, the use, including any modifications to the dwelling, and that's I cut out dwelling with the building because there were so many dwellings. I, I just wanted to, as I started removing dwelling, I said, well, yeah. if I change it this way, it's not going to preserve the single family residential, you know what I mean? Yeah. Look in a residence district, which is. Yeah. When um Um, Sarah, can you eat this stuff? She didn't holes in these. Oh, um, just this stuff. So I you know we ordered them from a printer, and she'll probably grab the set. And they oh, that's what okay. Emily didn't do it. Um, I have a free help printer at work. I'll try to do whatever. <laughs> oh. I stuck them in there anyway. Am I on mute? No, you're on. You're oh, so it seems like there are um, Airbnbs that are not twenty two thousand square feet, and that the owner doesn't live there. So we don't regulate Airbnbs. This is a bed and breakfast according to the zoning regulation. So okay. Airbnbs are not regulated by the zoning commission. That would be an ordinance potentially through the selectman's office, the commission. Um, it has kind of consistently said we don't really want to get into the business of regulating rentals. Okay. Uh, 
So I, I mean that, I don't know if that still stands now, but that's kind of a totally, it's a different discussion. So this okay. was just kind of a quick fix to remove the comp, you know, the comp of the, okay. I'm sure bring it up. Any other thoughts? I don't even know of that many um, inns, if you want to call them that, in town. Yeah, these regulations, I think, were originally came with the Deacon Timothy Pratt House and oh. yeah, James's Pharmacy. Um, that's really how they were introduced. They, they were never designed, like I said, for Airbnbs. It was, um, I think... There's, I don't, there's another Airbnb that we permitted a few years ago. I don't know if they ever went through with it, but there really aren't a lot. Um, I, I think, I think with Airbnbs, people, I don't know, maybe the demand for a bed and breakfast, but a bed and breakfast kind of has the nice little, you know, you have your breakfast. <laughs> right. Portion to it, so it's a little bit different. All right, so do you have any other regulation fixes that we found errors or anything with that you can think of? Yeah. Um, so I guess what I'll do is maybe email the members that are not here, um, see if they had any comments. If this works for everyone. Sure. Yeah. Um, and the incorporate them in, and then maybe I'll just see what comes back, and I'll talk to either schedule a public hearing if you think it's not too soon. No, I think I think you should. You know, unless something that. comes out of the comments that there's something huge that it, we need yeah. to go over. Um, okay. Is that what you'd like to do? I'm okay with that. All right, and then we'll address those when you when you do talk to them. Then make sure you. Yeah, I just marked that up. So yeah, thank you. That was what probably the matter of putting it in a yeah. computer. Sometimes I appreciate that. you catching that. I saw yeah. it work actually, and then I just so what I was doing was I was trying to put them in order the nine definitions, yeah, the tens, and then I yeah. moved, I started shifting in the ten. but anyway, yeah. that's fine. All right, and then it has to be reviewed obviously thank by you. our attorney as well. No. Okay, good. Was this part of the committee representative and staff reports? No. So okay. committee representative and that. staff reports. Um, I did send today to you um, a appeal of my decision on a denial um, for a request to modify a variance approval. Um, I don't have that authority, and there was also a variance request relating to um, a modification to a rooftop deck um, for the members who have been on the commission. I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, for our new members, we did have some history back and forth with rooftop decks, um, and the Zoning Board of Appeals <laughs> And I did send all of this to everyone here, sending um, a letter asking the Zoning Commission to amend their regulations to allow rooftop decks. Um, and the Zoning Commission had a meeting and went through a number of reasons as to why, if anything, they would strengthen the regulations so that we didn't have you know, a, a house where you have somebody, you have your first floor, your second floor, and then you have this on the third floor, so to speak, you just have this giant flat roof with a deck. Um, so I bring this to the commission because I know this has been of interest in back and forth with the ZBA. So I just thought I would inform you of the appeal and the request to modify the variance. Yeah, I mean, so do you want to comment on this to the ZBA or do you have any or just I already answered your email. Well that's I was email, I was emailing you as co as the chairman. As the chairman of the committee. But you didn't know you were chairing. So well I I sort of had a feeling just, I wasn't gonna be here after okay. you did that, but so the question is in the past, sometimes the zoning commission has commented to the zoning board of appeals 
on variances that they may not be too fond of. What what triggered this? Was there oh ab about the rooftop things? Yes. Well, we have been discussing that for a while, but someone went. So I guess historically, and yeah, I did send some they had background a, information to you, but it was a little late. Yeah. Um, so historically, the zoning commission is not allowed for rooftop decks off of the. Um, but if you have a one story house, you can have a deck. If you have a two story house, you can have the deck, yeah. and especially with the flood zone where the second story is really the first floor. Right. Um, so the discussion was that there were a number of variances to the Zoning Board of Appeals requesting rooftop decks or decks off of half stories, which under section nine are prohibited. So there was this request um, for my interpretation and some of the folks on the ZBA really didn't agree with my interpretation. And then the zoning commission has always held that interpretation. So what I did was the, um, I talked to the zoning commission and you kind of backed up that interpretation and then went and said to ZBA, this isn't really something um, we, we want to change. And, you know, and there were a number of reasons. It's, you know, somewhat intrusive. You have, you know, people 25, 30 feet above you, you know, in the air, having a giant party, um, you know, people dropping things off of them. There was a whole bunch of different, the architecture, you know, and I granted flat roofs, you know, were used for widow's walks. We had that discussion, but for the most part, people really aren't building widow's wash to wash their sailors come home <laughs> from sea. They're, they're, they're for different purposes. Um, and the decision was um, to, to to keep the regulation as it is in strength. To prohibit it. It is prohibited. Right. And the yeah. ZBA wanted that. The ZBA to, wanted us to take another because it, Okay, because they didn't want to go the application. The thing is, ZBA, a variance, hardship. They don't know the meaning of the word hardship. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but... No, that's fine. So they just wanted hardship. They didn't want people coming to them, and then they didn't they want to. Didn't turn, want to they had some down. of them that they didn't want to turn yeah. down, and okay. they had no yeah. hardship. I think yeah. that was really okay. That's fine. Uh, so that's where this was that's a bit right. of the back and forth. Yeah. So how do you want to proceed? Have Mark write them the letter. I am Matt, rather. Sorry. Direct. I mean, oh. so is that an agreement by the commission? Oh, that's mine. No, yes. I'm suggest. I'm yes. 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 All right. Okay. So you're directing me to contact your attorney to yeah. write a letter to the ZBA about the most recent variance modifications, or the, when the appeal. Anyway. <laughs> okay. The next okay. one. Um. So, so that you're aware, I did send out certified letters to the remaining businesses who still have their COVID outdoor seating and we don't know the fate. Um, so I'm working on it. Um, I also did send out a whole slew of letters about the um, flags on the Boston Post Road and a number of other illegal signs. Some folks have just flat out ignored them, yeah. um, the order. So, it's I'm working on. Okay. Um, okay. okay. Um, the other um, request that came through. Um, so the little pub is going to be coming to you for a special exception permit because they expanded their parking lot with gravel in the back some time ago. Um, after they open, and then they want to keep their COVID outdoor seating. And I'm not sure if you're aware that they have their property, but they also purchased the house to the left. Yes. And additional land. And what we did talk at one point that they were coming in, they're waiting for a new survey, and they did retain Joe Wren. Um, and what they would like to do, their last request was that they 
decided that they thought it would be fun to have some goats out in the back. Um, <laughs> and it actually, I guess it, it's kind of it, it's almost like a little petting zoo. I know people will bring their grandkids over there and I guess you feed them. So um, yeah. they know they have to come in. They're gonna come in for, um, to add an agricultural use to this. They also make honey there. And um, yeah. so that would be part of this kind of a, a whole interesting and all the uses are allowed which is nice in the b3 um, but what they would like to do and they will be patient and wait um, is that they would like to move the chickens uh, at the residential house up in the back next to the goats uh, but they do want to do that and run the risk of um, cooking the chickens no getting the getting the <laughs> the commission upset that they did that before their special yeah. permit because they did say they were coming in with the goats but we did have a meeting we did go through all the uses the owner is working on that special permit so it's up to you they can wait but if they can move them they would like to i don't care i said whatever I don't know. What does everybody think? What does everybody think? What's you need to direct me? <laughs> um, might be I, a better I, place for the chickens. Hmm? Might be a better location for the chickens. So to keep the goats no, coming in. Okay. Well, as long as they're in a, <clears throat> the uh, appropriate coop to protect them from. Yeah, they, they would just. Move their coop from. <laughs> so they lay eggs. They do lay eggs. So the little club, they also they lay eggs and they also make honey, and um, nice. that honey is used in their food. And now they're going for this agricultural mm -hmm. kind of spin with this little, I guess you could call it farm a petting petting and zoo type of a farm to table. As long as they don't kill the goats, or or whatever. I want to, it's not, that's not the purpose. <laughs> cheese. It's cheese. It's cheese. Okay, so, yeah, yes. I've noticed the beehives in the past. If there are goats, can there then be llamas? Well, that's, that's, I think, what they're going to talk about when they get to the agricultural uses. Okay. Um, there's all kinds of ideas, so we need to kind of wrap it all in together, goats and... Yeah. Um, other animals and kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And then the bees. The bees. Okay. The Birds and the bees. So well, they generation. have that section on the hill for the wildflowers to pollinate for the bees. It's really well done. Oh, nice. Yeah. They've done a good job. And that's actually where they want to move the chicken. The chicken. But wow. they want to be given the green light to move them now. Yes, they don't. They don't want to come in and have the commission say, yeah, you, you know, you talk to us about the goats, and then you're coming for the special permit. They'd like to move them now, but they'll wait. I, I don't see any reason they have to wait. To I'm move fine them. with it all. Okay. So they they can move the chickens, move, and then come back in with their move ahead. Special exception yes. as long as they move it along. Um, I think that's really all I have for you. Unless you have something for me. I just want to go home. Yeah. Just to try and figure out how this guy can get I feel, feel for the guy because he doesn't have I feel the for money. the guy, but, but you're right. He overstepped his bounds. By he went and bought any, that. Any, yeah. I mean, I, if we feel sorry for every single person that comes in here, I know yeah. I felt bad I too. Sorry for me. But I thought to myself, no, I don't. I, <laughs> yes, you felt sorry. For I did. I, I absolutely. Well, that's did. what I'm saying. If we yeah. feel sorry for every person like him that comes yeah. in, what you know, yeah, no, we're never gonna that's see not why we're that's here. Part of the problem, so yes. I think right. that's yes, why I, I try mean, not to I feel agree. sorry for him. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I feel harm too. But these situations have come up where I mean, folks I mean, have entered into leases and the property owners yeah. don't want to put a dime and they trip a special yeah. permit and they're like, right. What do you mean I have to redo yeah. all these things? It, it's somewhat of a similar yeah, situation. situation. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I think a lot of I mean, but we're here to. I think a lot of smaller business owners may not, or especially tenants, may not realize 
you know, the scope of how complicated permitting can mm -hmm. be. Well, it's so unfortunate. The, the one thing that came up uh, that I'm going to send your way to most likely is that the 900 building was sold and they did some facade oh, yeah. renovations and yeah. um, they ended up, I got a preliminary sign plan for the building, wall signs and a stick in the, or a freestanding sign and it had a number of tenants. So I, I know that there's been a church or a chapel that has been in there. Yeah, there's been an enforcement issue. I just saw the sign. Um, and well, yeah, they have an illegal A frame sign. Yes. The artesian mm -hmm. builders, we wrote them up with a cease and desist order. Um, they ignored that cease and desist order. Um, there's another. There's a few other businesses that are not that I wasn't even aware had moved in, whether they moved in with the current owner or the previous owner. But I think from our regulations, the chapel at minimum and the location in the pedestrian node is most likely going to trip a special permit with the commission. But the interesting part of it, and I'm going to go through and take a look at the um, the file and the approvals. Is and I, I've been in the upstairs, but it has 16, ended up with 16 tenants overall. I know there's a lot of them in there. Well, up, no, I mean tenant spaces. So I was going to look at and kind of see, I know there's some small spaces upstairs, but I, but I think overall, it, it seems to me that they're probably going to be headed your way for a, a special exception. So I'm trying to figure out what's allowed. I, okay. I don't know um, if there was, I know there was people in the basement at one point. So we'll see. And then I contacted the fire marshal and the building official. So I'm trying to kind of wrap my head around which, you know, I, I'm pretty confident I know which um, tenants need certificates of zoning compliance at a minimum. Okay. But I need to familiarize myself with the old approvals to see if there's any been any changes or expansion. And then I asked the health department, the fire marshal, and the building official if they had anything too. So um, that one will probably be coming to you. Okay. So, Chris, I, I didn't catch where this building was. You said 900? 900 Boston Post Road. Okay. It's where. It's across from King Street. Okay. Near the here. They okay. just recited it with that gray siding. It's got Nyman's Jewelers and there's a hearing aid. Oh, that's nice. Okay. And a yeah. seamstress. And okay. um, now there's the artesian builders with all the flags out in the road. Okay. By the third season desist order. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's the bill. Okay. So are we good? Everyone? Yes. Okay. We're good. Okay. Yes. Thanks for the meeting. Okay, great. Um, I'll make a motion to adjourn then. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Time Aye. to go.